Grace and peace and mercy be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who gives us victory over death and the grave. Amen. I'd like to begin just by reading a few psalms, psalms where God speaks to us in His Word, bringing us His comfort and His peace and His presence at a time like this. And the first is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Second Psalm is Psalm 46. Truly a strong psalm. This is the song that Martin Luther used to write his hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, based on this psalm. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks to you for Jack and for all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful to death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to share with you three different readings. The first is from Isaiah chapter 25, and it likens salvation to a great feast on a mountain. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces he will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Our second reading is a great vision that John gives us in the Revelation it's from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes, and 
They were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where do they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. One more reading. Words of Jesus, John chapter 6. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. And that's the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, true promise for us tonight. As we gather together tonight, we really do so for two very important reasons. First, it's to give thanks to God for the life of Jack, who was suddenly taken from us. Um, no words can express, I'm sure, the, the hurt, the shock, the, the numbness, the pain. Nothing makes sense. But to know that in spite of all of that, God is still in control and Jack is with God. And he's there through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus is the one that, that brought him home. And... It, it's a, it's a lesson for us, too, because the Lord's question to us is, are you ready? Are you ready to meet me at any time? Because who would have thought two weeks ago on a Friday night we'd be sitting here tonight? We just don't know. God doesn't tell us when our end is. And, of course, Jack has shown us how a Christian lives, and how a Christian dies. Because he's with the Lord, and we know that tonight. So we give thanks to God for his life. And the second reason that we're here is for you, as family, as friends, um, co-workers, members of the church, community people, um, to hear from God his words of comfort tonight. His words uh, that are more than just a, a hallmark platitude that says, uh, you know, feel better. Rather, his words, the same words that he used when he spoke at the beginning and called creation into being, he speaks his peace to us in his word. And not only does it say it, but it brings it. That's how God works. Uh, Anybody here ever follow some of the patristics of the church? You know, some of the ancient history. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. But there is a guy by the name of John Chrysostom. You ever hear him? You know, Greek Orthodox people, uh, they know who he is. <laughs> John Chrysostom. The reason I'm telling you this is because uh, Chrysostom was kind of a nickname that was given to him. And what it meant was golden mouth. Chrysostom, stom is the stem, the mouth, golden mouth. 
he was, a, he was a preacher, an early church father, that could speak God's Word so eloquently that he could just win people over for the Lord, like, just, just by breathing. He had such a good voice. And guess who else had a really great voice for reading Scripture? Jack. He right, right from up here, many, many times, many Sundays. Here he was at Grace Lutheran Church reading God's Word. That same Word that we just spoke about that has power and changes lives. Um, he certainly uh, affected a lot of people in so many different ways. This is why it hurt. we still love him, and this is why this all hurts so bad tonight. Um, just so many things I'm sure that you could recount in your minds about, about him. And um, I would encourage you to do that. That, that in a sense, kind of keeps him alive in our heart. And that's, that's an important thing. But remember, we're not here to, to really talk about that. We're, t- we're talking about the fact he's still alive tonight with, with the Lord Jesus. In order to help us get a little bit of bigger picture of Jack and, and of his life, uh, Robert's asked if he could share some words with us tonight, and then Phyllis may or may not. We'll see how she feels when we get to that point. So, Robert, let me give you the microphone here. And there you go. Thank you very much. Most of you who knew my father knew he was in radio. It was John Nolan, but as Jack Nolan, Rick Randell, and he just loved speaking to people. He loved radio waves because he could actually tell a joke, and before you turned off the radio, you knew it. Why did the coffee pot get sued? On coffee grounds. You know, those are the things <laughs> about my father that people knew. Or we'd go to the restaurant, and we'd be sitting at the bar eating dinner, at crickets, and uh, our friend Tommy would go, Dad would tell him a joke, he'd go to the other end, stinks. But you know what, that was my father, he got attention. That was the way he did it, and that's the way I'll always remember him. Not for how he died, but for who he was. And I love him, and I'll always remember him, and I used to make fun of him because he was on WALK, and one night he went, here's cool in the gang. And my friend Glenn told him, and uh, I thought, oh, oh God, I'm gonna hear it. Hi, Rob, here's Cool in the Gang. You would hear the, and every time he said a song, he would do it just so I would know. And I loved him. And every time I do it, I'll think of him. And Dad, I hope you're at peace and I love you so much. And when I hear Cool in the Gang, I'll always think of you. Good night, Dad, and good luck. Love, Robert. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Is this working? It's working. Okay. I'm not going to say much. I didn't plan on what I was saying. Uh, my brother was a very, very special guy. He was very special to me. Uh, not just his puns and his jokes, but just a caring, loving person. And we all love him very much. And I just want to thank all of you, my God, for well, the people that are here that uh, meant so much to him. And it means so much to us that you're here. And um, John and I shared our faith together, too. So I know he's with the Lord. And that's the comfort that we're getting, and I thank you all once again. John, I love you. This is for you. Thanks, Phyllis. So what do we do with this? How do we, how do we go on? How do we, how do we get through this grief, press through it? Well, certainly we know that he's with the Lord, so that's that causes us to grieve, but not as those without hope. We, we have that hope that we have in Jesus Christ. He's the Lamb in the center of the throne that we heard in, in the Revelation, the one around whom all are gathered. And they're gathered there because it says that they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what our Lord Jesus has done for us. That's what he did for Jack. Through his blood, he makes us clean. Through his blood, he takes away our sin. And sin is what blocks us from heaven and and blocks us from the Lord. But when you're in Christ, when you believe in Jesus, His blood is on you. And just like it was on the the mantles of the doors during the Passover, um, His blood is upon us and it cleanses us from all our sin and it makes us holy in God's eyes. 
That's that white robe that was being spoken of. That white robe uh, reminds us of baptism, right? That's when people are initiated, if you will, into the faith and, and given that white robe of righteousness uh, symbolically, but um, to remind us of the fact that Jesus has qualified us for heaven. So we have that hope. But, but what, about, what about, you know, tomorrow and, and pressing forward? I think what I would have you do is remember the words of the 23rd Psalm. We all probably could say it from memory. We all learned it in Sunday school as little kids. But in that psalm, God says so much to us. First of all, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, if the Lord is my shepherd, that means I am his sheep. And what that also means is that there's a relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep. The Bible has a lot to say about that, right? Jesus talks uh, uh, in sheep language a lot, John chapter 10. You know, 99 sheep are safe in the pen, and one goes out wandering. The good shepherd brings that wandering sheep back to himself. Do you realize that you cannot walk far enough away from God to make him stop loving you? I hope you realize that. His love doesn't stop. And what is he doing? He's always drawing back to himself. And sometimes he uses situations just like this to do that. It's a wake-up call for us. And we need to heed the word of the Holy Spirit who is in our face sometimes and in our heart saying, come back. Come back to the shepherd, dear sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, and then it says that he, he makes us lie down in green pastures and, and leads us beside the still waters. That's provisional language. God tells us that he's going to take care of us. Um, Jesus says so often, you know, do not worry. I know when a bird falls from the sky, you're worth so much more to me than birds. And he's going to take care of us. He's going to provide for our needs. Um, notice also, if you were to you know, follow this analogy a little bit, it's the green pastures and the still waters. It's not the, the, ground, the brown the stubbly uh, grass where, where the sheep can't feed, nor the rapids where the sheep would be in danger of getting a drink and falling in and being swept down the river. But he provides well. He restores our soul. <laughs> wow, do we need that tonight, don't we? Our souls. That's where it's hurting, right? That's the jack size hole in your heart that only Jack can fill. Surprise, surprise, the Lord can fill it better. He restores my soul. Um, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You're rotting your staff comfort me. Uh, when I grew up, I, uh, the, the church I, I was a little kid at in California, it was called Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and they had this life-size statue of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, you know, with the, the arm and the lamb was in it, and he had the, 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 the staff in, in the other hand. I love that statue. Um, but it was missing something. <laughs> it talks about his staff, but it also says that he had a rod, a rod is like a straight stick. It didn't have the little question marky hook at the end. And it, a lot of times, like a, like a billy club or something, is loaded with, with lead or something inside. It's really heavy stick. It's a weapon. And if any wolf or any robber or anyone else dared to mess with the flock, the shepherd would go after him. That's good to know when we're in the valley of the shadow of death. God protects us. We're at a very vulnerable point in our lives right now. But not with God. There is Jesus, the good shepherd, who sends his holy angels. We really believe that they exist. Not the little cherubs you pin on your, your jacket or anything like that, but they're part of God's invisible creation that we confess on Sunday in the Nicene Creed when we say that creed. You know, all things seen and unseen are visible and invisible. God's angels shield us and they protect us. But in that psalm also it says, 
that we don't stay there. We don't stay in the valley of the shadow of death. And, oh, by the way, I should say this. You know who went through the valley of the shadow of death first for us? Jesus, right? The walls were all around him. The mountains of death were there. And he goes through and he goes into death and he dies and he leads us through death. And so it's not uncharted waters for the Christian. We follow the leader. He takes us through. He brings us out at the other side. It says that he sets us at a table before our enemies. Well, a lot of people don't understand that. You know, it's just very prosaic and, and beautiful. But let me explain to you what that's talking about because I think it's significant. Um, it was the practice of early kings and their armies after they went to battle with each other that, of course, at the end of the war, there would be a winning side and a losing side. And you know what they would do? The king and the commanding officers of the winning side would sit at table, or they'd actually recline at table, and they would eat in front of the losers. It was a way of rubbing in the victory and rubbing in the loss that those guys experienced. They'd take them off and do what they will. So tonight, here's the message. Jack is sitting at the table. He's sitting at the table. That's the table that we heard about from Isaiah, this, this feast of fine wines and aged meats and all this. It's the picture of heaven. And he's sitting at the table because he won. He won because Jesus won for him. And you know who's standing in front of him? Sin and death and the power of the devil, all those things that would keep you from winning in your life. Jesus took the victory over each single one of those things. And he gives that to you now. And so the psalm ends. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. God's not going to take off on you. But he's going to shower you with his goodness and his mercy and his grace. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, that's something Jack understands better than you and I do tonight. But that's also a promise that that lamb seated on the throne is made and kept and sealed with his own blood for you and for me. For that we give him thanks and praise. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth, your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, that they may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the gate of death and the grave, we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and walk as yet by faith your Holy Spirit that he may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn, especially Jack's family and those who loved him in this life, a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope in the communion of your church and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, be with everyone that was involved in this accident. That's what it was, tragic accident. Let your grace, peace, mercy, forgiveness be operative on, on all who were involved and support them with your care. And finally, help us, we pray, in the midst of things that we cannot understand, to believe in and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Lord Jesus, all these things we bring before your throne of grace, perhaps praying it in the best way that we could, in the way you taught us to pray. And I ask that we would all join hands at this time and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to just have a brief prayer of committal for Jack at this time uh, by his, his ashes here. Merciful Father and Lord of life, with whom live the spirits of those who depart in the faith. We thank you for the blessings of body and soul that you granted to our departed brother, John Nolan, whose earthly remains we now lay to rest. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed that we shall rise again at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. Amen.